you for being here. And thank you to our super facilitators, all of them already on this call, all of them. And they join from outside the Zoom. All right, so, and I'm glad to have them here. And I believe all the community members are also very glad that you are here. So I would, I've started recording this session, so it's also going to be available on YouTube as usual. Uh, this is to let you know uh, that uh, we listen to you, right? Remember our last session, this was brought up. And based on that, whatever we have planned before, we shared that. And just to ensure that we listen to your concerns. So that's the reason why we are here. Of course, based on this topic that you have chosen. So I will minimize or I'll just go straight to this slide here. And I'm going to put this on slide mode. Uh, I would need people to see they can see my screen just to be sure. I really need that response now that I'm sharing my entire screen. So I need someone to say yes, I can see your screen. We yeah, give you a thumbs can. up, I won't see it. Okay, thank you. Good. So on this call with me today, we have these four powerful people. All right. So we have, of course, a woman in the house. So we are <laughs> so my point is we have male and female all right in the house so uh, let's just note this let's have a great time together of course uh, so what do you need to do be present you want to avoid any distractions the reason why i'm saying this is because the people that are on this call today they are not any other person and so you really want to listen to what they're going to say to help us so I put this without having to read through, but just be free. There are no stupid questions. They are willing to answer your questions. They have made, made themselves available to us, even at this odd hour, according to their time zone. So please let us take advantage of that. There is no nice around you. You can always drop your message. I'm sure I would, uh, people will call our attention to it when people drop their messages. So I will just move away from the slide. So I'm not new to us. Uh, I'm your person, you know me. So I will just uh, move away from the slide. So um, Janet is also known to the community. She's one of the leaders. Uh, she's always in the community, not talking. You won't know her, like she's not someone that, but she's always there behind the scenes doing a lot of things. Just to ensure everyone is fine. So she is a data analyst. She has more than this year of experience that you're saying. She just wants to be very humble. So she put that there for, for you or for us. Uh, so uh, while the session is on, of course, I will be calling them one at a time to share their experiences. Uh, they will guide us in some of the things they've done so that we can pick learnings, how they also ace their interview and they become senior data analyst, senior business analyst, or whatever it is that position us at now. So, you know, I will just move to the next person. I didn't arrange it, I just arranged it uh, this way, all right. So on my slide, the next person is Eddie. I've known Eddie for some time. Uh, maybe I was privileged to be part of the people that trained Eddie. So Eddie is doing very well. And, oh, just a moment. Uh, so Janet is in the UK. She wouldn't want me to mention where she is, but <laughs> she's in the UK working with maybe top five company in the world, if I guess that right. Now, Eddie is in Canada as of now. So um, based on the slide, you can see uh, what he does and who he is. Each of them will have about 15 minutes to tell us their experience, all right? So you will learn from them. Oh, so they've not worked in just one place, they've worked in many places, so it's not, they are not new to this. So we want to learn from the experiences, right? Then this is Toby Kazim. <laughs> Toby Kaz okay, so um, Janet, Edith, and Toby, they are my family, like they are close to my heart. We all know that, or they know, of course, we all know that. So um, they are tested and trusted people. Toby is also in Canada. 
all of these people were formerly in Nigeria. <laughs> so, but uh, as God will have it, they've worked, they've gained experiences, and they are doing very well. Mm -hmm. So they will share their experience with us on this call. So, and this is a great person, someone that is here with us on this call to help us. Okay, so the previous people that are coming, I mean, Janet, Eddie, and Toby, they are data analysts, business analysts, respectively. Of course, they, they are core data analysts, actually, but knowledge of data analysis translated or transferred to, you get the point, business analysts. So you'll be hearing them talk. So if you are a business analyst on this call, of course, uh, Janet is there, Eddie is there, Toby is there. If a data analyst, three of them will be able to answer you. Business analyst, three of them will be able to answer you. Whatever it is, but the focus is how to haze, interview, you get questions as regards to data analysis and land a good job. So we have a coach in the house. All right. Mm -hmm. So he's going to talk from his word of experience. He's going to guide us. Of course, he's also going to present for a few minutes, like 15 minutes. All right. Meaning that each of this person, they have 15, 15 minutes to tell us to pour out their heart to us, either in form of the experiences put together in slide or anything they want to see. I really just want us to pick learning from them. Please, if your mic is on, you can mute your mic. Someone's mic. Okay. Please, you if your mic that. is on, when you join a call and your mic is on, please be less note. This is recorded and all of these conversations will go to the YouTube. There's no way I can see that background noise out. All right. Sorry, everyone, for that. Now, so is a coach is going to guide us in some things, right? It's also, I don't know if he's in Netherlands at this moment. That's where he's based, but he moves around. He helps companies. He moves from one place to another. So we are going to learn from them. All right. So, um, okay. For starter, right? I put some point here. Um, I would just because when I'm done with this, I'm not the I'm not the I'm not the one doing that again. I will just be behind and call them and you get we just flow like that but before we proceed from the first slide i showed them i think the second slide there is no stupid questions you have your questions list them out hacks them you can call any one of them you can address them to say okay this question is directed to xyz i mean you get the point if he says it and other people want to contribute it what we are doing is a round table today so that everyone can just learn from this this wet of experience i mean these people that are loaded right but i put something here uh, based on the things people have reached out to ask me, all right, um, let me just go straight. So I just say worthy of note. There are things you should note, right? Um, preparation is very important because uh, whatever it is that you want to, you want to do with that data analysis or anything, you preparation is key. It's just a key point, right? But it can be more than what you say. So you also want to work on different projects to build your portfolio. These people that are on this call, they have done different projects before they even interview us, I mean, for that data analysis, before they employ them, they worked on different projects. So that uh, would show, all right? It's, it's just to show that, okay, they are fit for purpose. So I will just talk briefly on what I call Adrian's story. Uh, I was privileged to train someone, I think maybe two, maybe 2020 or 2021. His name is Adrian. And Adrian got a job. That's the story. Uh, for some time, Adrian didn't get a job. He's in the UK. So he joined one of our classes. This is a community environment, but I'm just bringing the story here to encourage anyone. All right. So Adrian didn't only attend the class, he worked on all the projects that uh, the data analysis session cover. He did it so well that he would ask for a review. He would send the project to me and say, let's review it. Let me check if it is good and all of that. He had no background knowledge as for data analysis before. All right. So a few months later, Adrian got a job. He got an interview, rather. So during the interview, they asked him X, Y, Z, and they asked him about the project he has done before. Out of all the projects Adrian has done, he, he confidently talked about one, one of the projects. And that was the reason they employed Hadrian. Of course, the mom attended one of our sessions to come and 
share the story, just like testimony to encourage people on the call. She told us the story, how the MD wrote a note that is employed straight up because of how it presented that project that he said he has worked on, he executed. And then in the UK, he got a life changing job, according to his mom. This story, of course, is more than how I just summarize it. It's just to encourage anyone on this call to let you know that you will be hearing different stories from the people we have brought together today. They are not just telling you tale by no life story or cook up story. They will be sharing from what of experiences. So you need to learn from them. Uh, there is this common thing they call star, but I added hers by calling it stars. When you're talking about a project, because when they interview as data analysts, of course, it's not theory. So you are a technical person, right? A developer, a technical person. So you need to tell them what you've done. So when you're talking about a project, I won't be reading through my slide. It's deliberate that I put it there because it's recorded. You can always watch it and, of course, read through this, the, the world. I won't go word by word. There's what we call situation, which you have to talk about, describing the issue or the problem or the context of whatever project. There is also tax. What are you supposed to do in terms of what are the expectations? What are the challenges? There's what call action. What are the things you did? Because when you're talking about that period, you don't just talk like you're talking. You need to like be intentional. You need to pour it out. So action will talk to what are the things you did, how you did solve the problem, and the result, of course, the outcome of whatever it is that you've done, how it has impacted on the business. And there is this that I had a course submission. Like at the end of everything, what recommendation did you give and all of that? So on this note, it's just a short thing that I put there. Let's get started. So I will just move away from here, right? And I will come look at our faces and I will be calling our facilitators one at a time. So what we want to do, in case you missed that, let me come back to my slide and just focus on the first, this particular one. Let me put it deliberately here. Be present. Be free to ask any questions, no stupid questions. You can address your question to any of the facilitators. And of course, for further, further guidance, uh, you can see that on each of the, okay, let me put it back. On each of the slides, I put the LinkedIn of each of us here, meaning that you can always connect. There are people that are willing to help you. This is Chinex on LinkedIn. This is Eddie on LinkedIn. This is Toby on LinkedIn. This is Kyle the Collardy on LinkedIn. All right. So, these people are here. So I would call Carl the first, he's a career coach, and I will just leave it to him to guide us in his own way. He's going to tell us the experiences. He has been privileged to do a lot of things for people, grow them and all of that. So it would just, uh, like I said, this is a round table. I'm not going to restrict anyone to anything. They'll be free to share from their world of experience. So Carl the please, uh, just confirm you can hear me just to be sure. Mr. Cowley, yes. hope good. Please, you have the floor. I can stop sharing in case you want to share your screen. Great. I have um, stopped. Yes, great. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Good to be here. Good to connect with you all. Um, I'm just going to try and share my screen. I will try and just, you know, um, go through a few items. Uh, I'm, I'm very used to, I like actually I'm um, using slides, so that sort of will help us get very visual with this. Um, one second, quickly. Uh, yes. To let me know when you can see my screen, by the way. Okay, I will. I've not seen it. I hope it's not my internet. If anyone has seen it, they can respond. But I Probably haven't. In a bit. Okay, I can see it now. Yes, please. Yes. Um, so I, I can't. I can't see. Uh, you let me know if there's any interaction. Uh, it's the first time I'm actually using Teams to sort of do this conversation. So just let me know if you can't, if there's any reaction, just help me, um, Mr. Chile. So I'll know. Then, 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 I will. I will. So I'll just, Please, just everyone, this. in case you have any question while you go through this, you can drop it in the chat. If you have yes. any question, you can show with the raise of hand, but we'll call you when it's done. Thank you so much. Yes. Please go ahead, sir. Yes. Great, thank you. I'll just go through the slides. Uh, I won't go through every single page of the slides because it's 15 minutes. Uh, 
but but I'll stay on some on some of the slides uh, as quickly as possible. So I'll just speak about my background, uh, what insights I'm sharing with you, and exactly what actions I'm sort of you know trying to sort of insight to take. For example, please, Mr. Dede, remind me if when I have like uh, three minutes to the end of my session, just you know. Definitely. Um. So yeah, uh, who, who am I? What exactly? And why am I here? And you know, what exactly do I have that is relevant to sort of help you stir you up in this direction? For example, um. Generally speaking, I, I've sort of um, had a lot of experience sort of working with building teams or working with um, entities in that perspective. So uh, deciding values for company, deciding how, what, when we need to hire and all of those perspectives. The second thing is I've also been partners with hiring managers, recruiters in terms of hiring. The third thing is I'm a certified coach, sort of work with people to sort of work in advancing their career, advancing in different directions as well. And finally, I've been someone who has actually interviewed myself, uh, you know, starting from back when I used to live in Nigeria a couple of years ago, I've uh, taken a couple of jobs around different parts of the world and sort of worked with different companies because I've, I've done interviews in, in, in the right way in that perspective. So four different dimensions, uh, someone who's advised entities, companies, someone who's partnered with people who are hiring different kinds of roles, someone who's a career coach who is trained and certified, and someone who has also interviewed myself in that perspective. So uh, I want to start with this, asking you in your mind, you could just put in the chat or reflect in your mind, why do you think businesses exist? And that's something we think about. Everybody just keeps asking that question. And why am I talking about this? It's really important to sort of start with why businesses exist, um, because we have different reasons. We think it's to make money and all that different things we're thinking about. But the main reason why they exist is to provide value. What does value mean in that sense, right? Um, it's pretty much about the fact that they need to provide value. And to provide value, every business sort of needs uh, four components, right? They have, they have to have products and services to, to deliver. They have to have a market that needs it. They have to have people that delivers that message or the product and service, and they have to have financial and other resources, right? Where do you come in? You are the people that you need in that perspective. You are either with an organization to actually help them increase their revenue or to reduce how they're spending. And that's how they make money. An interview is basically an opportunity for them to actually see you and assess whether you meet their needs. And when we are hiring people in that perspective, they're thinking of a couple of things, three things. The first thing is you first of all start with justifying the need of that person in the team. Oh, do we need this person? Do we have money for this person? Next thing is you start to set requirements. What do we need this person to meet before we can hire this person? And the final thing is you then begin to look for the person and validate that the person meets the requirements. So what are you taking away from this? You need to realize that it's about value, economic or emotive, but you need to provide value as an, as, as an individual, for example, that helps the business get better. And how do you land interviews? How do you think about you know, getting jobs? I think I just talked about two, two basic areas. Do you provide the value? And how do you provide the value? Uh, you have hard skills. With data analysis, you sort of had three basic areas that I call hard skills, for example. How do you work the data out? You know, things like how do you use Excel? How do you use maybe Python? How do you use other platforms that sort of help you mine and work with your data in that sense? The second thing is how do you interpret this data? How do you make sense and tell stories with your data, for example? How do you help them make money or make revenue from what you've got from data in that sense? And the final thing is how do you visualize your data as well? You know all the tools you use, you know all those perspectives, but the hard skills are critical. And then the soft skills that people look at, for example, in hiring to that role in that perspective you must be able to have st structured communication. If you are a data analyst, then you have to sort of be able to pass across the message. Um, grammatical errors are seen as not having attention to details, for example, right? As data analysts, you need to be able to see the details when you're working around that. And critical thinking, of course, you know, is very important. Do you show the value? So it's one thing to have the value or provide it. It's another thing to know how to show the value in that perspective. How do you show the value? One is how you develop yourself. Um, you upskill yourself, belong to a community, like, like where you are right now in that perspective, have continuous improvements as part of your life. Presenting yourself is one, doing the good work. Uh, Did already spoke about a couple of very important things around doing the good work, really important for you to do the good work, show yourself, be the portfolio in that sense, keep work speaks for you in that perspective and document your experience is how you show it, for example. Places like LinkedIn, your CV on forums are ways to show this. This slide is summarizing the fact that do you provide value and do you show the value? And how do you interview? Uh, he spoke about something that's very, very important. And I just want to write read that earlier on. I'll just talk on maybe five basic steps that I think you need to do to, to do interviews. One will be researching the company and understanding the value they provide and how you can add to that. On two is understanding the role and requirements for that role and how you fit into that role. 
The third thing is what I call a SWOT analysis. Analyze your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and threats, and spot what your blues and grows are. Your blues are the areas you're strong at and things that you can that you have in line with the job description. And your grows are areas that you know that are gaps and how do you cover it? The first thing is what are the undertones? Um, you need to research the interviewers or the interviewing tips for specific companies. Some companies require some things over some other companies. And the final thing is communicate value generally, right? And how do you communicate value? Uh, do they actually speak about it? It's using the STAR technique, right? Situation, task, actions, and results. That's how you sort of communicate value during interviews. And finally, um, on closing the gap, just want to talk about a few things. Um, we're working with a couple of recruiters hiring for data analysts. There's some things that are, that are red flags, that are things that, that are not very important. Data, uh, recruiters and hire, hire managers always search uh, with a couple of things called say a least boolean search for example or x-ray search they use some keywords to search your profiles on linkedin for example or on other platforms uh that you belong to either you belong you are on place like kaggle or you are on different forums and all that search those platforms for keywords um like a use of excel use of sql little database visualization and so those keywords if they're not on your profile on linkedin for example which we'll get in, in some details i believe the, you might not be, be found in that perspective. So they look at all those basic things and those things are below the line to get a sense of how you're thinking, how you're doing, look at your CV, uh, is it coherent? Are there red flags? Um, is the only thing on your CV uh, just Excel? Uh, are there other things you're saying? Does your profile tell a story? Um, are there ways to sort of you know, show that they provide value? I'll summarize with this. When hiring for a role or when having to fill a role, every single person who is hiring um, a hiring manager wants to look at someone that provides value. You may have the value, you may be the best person that when you're doing in that perspective, but if you don't understand how to communicate that value in a succinct way, like it's the attention, you will not get the attention. Uh, I, I live, currently live in the Netherlands, uh, like I mentioned earlier on, and Amsterdam is a place where a lot of talent actually flying in every single time. Every, like literally almost every week, I meet a new Nigerian who's been flown in and sponsored fully because of their skill from wherever they've lived before they're mostly in Nigeria and they are fully sponsored in that sense because they don't only have the skill, but they also are able to sort of present the skills in a way that can get attention and show and communicate value. For example, I'll leave the experts on the call talk about uh, the other things you need to know in technical expertise, but these are like the quick sum and how to provide and show that value, for example. Hard skills and soft skills are critical. Uh, how you develop and present yourself are really important. Understanding how to ace the interview. Example and pass across. Interview means uh, uh, and is about seeing. How do they see you? How do they perceive you in providing value in that sense? And the perspective of the person who's hiring you. Don't always think about your own view. Are they seeing? that this person will show that they can do this job if I give opportunities to them in that perspective. I just want to stop there and just, you know, uh, pass on to everyone and see if there are questions uh, at some point and then we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So what he has done is he has summarized everything. I don't think that is, he has just summarized everything. So we would have time to ask questions, whatever it is that you want to ask him. Please, he will be able to answer you. I, I'm begging you, you know what I'm begging you? These people that we have brought here, they are valuable people. So while they are here, let us take advantage of them, right? Okay, so thank you so much, Mr. Kolade, once again. Thank you so very much. Um, so for people that want to travel to the Netherlands, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it's fine. Thank you, everyone. Let us confirm we can hear me, and then I'll, I'll call the next person, just to be sure my internet is fine. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Good. Okay, so um, I'm going to call on Janet. So Jane, uh, it's not about presentation slide, all right? It's just to say, you know, career coach is already prepared for us. You get the point. So that's why it would always come up with slide and all of that. So uh, my point is our facilitators are here to share from their word of experience. They will introduce themselves like they will tell us what they have done and all of that by the time each of them is done right then whatever question you want to have you know that will be specific you want to ask them then you ask them so janet please you have the floor uh good morning sorry i don't have any slide 
But I'll just nice. talk. Uh, so you want to see I'll your face? Talk. Maybe for a few seconds, then you can press it. Okay, no worries. This is my face, no problem. That's fine. I'll turn on my camera. So let me know when you can see my face. So can we see my face? So this is me. This is Jane. Yes, you can see your face. <laughs> All right. So let's start. Well, getting a job as a data analyst, for me, I would say you need to prepare yourself. In t just like other facilitators have said, in terms of preparation, I mean uh, technically and in soft uh, skills. You need to be able to have a good CV. You can not just use one CV for all your application. When there's a job, you need to look at what is the job description. Do I fit in? How do I come in? You just don't do a CV in, how would I put it, in a general format for each job. Do research on the organization you, are, you want to apply to. Look at what you have, what your skills, how you can match it with what is requested. And I will always say, always have your unique selling point so that when recruiters call you and they, build, and they are like, oh, I saw your CV on LinkedIn, I'm interested. Tell me about yourself. That is when your unique selling point comes in. I'll give you an example. Maybe I received a call now. Someone says, oh, Janet, I saw your CV on LinkedIn. You are a match to uh, the post I'm looking for. Can you please tell me about yourself? You can just say, oh, I'm someone who is very versatile. I'm hardworking, I'm flexible. I enjoy working with other people. I've worked over the last two years as a data analyst in so, 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 and so. During my years in this company, my team have successfully delivered such and such projects. And I've been able to use so, 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 and so skills such as I can work on SSIS, Power BI, Excel. That is you selling yourself in two or three minutes. From there, the recruiter will start asking you further questions like, oh, you said you've worked on Power BI. Can you tell me more about that? You can say, oh, I've built dashboards on HR for logistic organization. Then you tell them, okay, the main reason why you had to build the dashboard and the, uh, the end results like, okay, for HR, I had to build like a vacation report so that people can track their holiday report. So that means you are helping the organization build the report where each person know, oh, this is the my leave for the year. This is what is remaining. This is my sick days. This is what I have left. And also the organization as well can plan using that. This is how many people who have vacation in December, you understand? So because vacation is also a cost to organization, even though people are not working. So they can also plan. So those are the things you need to like be able to talk about. And like Mr. GD have said, even though you are looking for a job, please and please, there are places you can download data, build dashboards, like build it, get it ready. Because when you have interview, someone might just ask you, what dashboard have you worked on? Can you show me? So you should be able to have some portfolios, dashboards that you've worked on and which you can present. For soft skills, I would say uh, is very, very necessary. Please, the HR person should correct me if I'm wrong. I think most organizations, based on my experience, they look more of 60% on soft skills and 40% on technical skills. Because you know what? Technical skills, you can learn it. But soft skills, that match into that organization culture. If you don't have it, you don't have it. There's nothing they can do about that. In terms of soft skills as a data analyst, you need to be able to pay attention to details, you know, communication. Look for how you like fit in when you are when you have job uh application you are writing. And even some will ask you questions like. Uh, how do you fit into our organization? Why should we hire you? It's more or less like trying to see part of your soft skill, like as a data analyst, attention to details, ability to analyze, 
interpret info, uh, in, information. So those are the things you need to be able to like, do your research in this organization. How do I fit in? Then sometimes you might see in interview questions, people asking you, what are your future ambitions? You won't just say, oh, I want this job so, 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 and so, because I can come, to, I can do this for your organization, I can do this. Yes, even if you're in an organization, they offer you the job. What is your career progression plan? So you should have all that in mind. They can also ask you, why do you want this job? It's just coming back to why do you fit into this organization? And they can also ask you some questions that you don't even expect. So I will say be prepared. I'll give an example of questions you don't expect. I had <laughs> an interview and that was actually my job, my current job. And what threw me off balance was uh, my boss asking me a question and the question was, if someone ate you right now, who would you say? I was just like, okay. I, I, as in, I've never seen it anywhere. You understand that kind of question. And I was just like, oh, well, if someone ate me right now, the person I would say is my son. And I get, and that led to another conversation of why would you say that? And I'm like, oh, he loves to test boundaries and he doesn't like uh, punishment. And for me, I believe that when you break the rules, there should be punishment. And I explained further and that was, that was it for me. I remember having a conversation with a friend after the interview and I said, oh, this is it and this is this, the question. And the person was like, oh, why will you use your personal experience? You shouldn't have used a personal experience. You should have been professional about it and everything. And guess what? That was the job I got. And when, after getting the job, when I resumed and I was talking with my boss, I'm like, oh, why would you ask that kind of question? And it was just like, number one, nobody will prepare you professionally for that kind of uh, question. And you were being honest. You didn't, you didn't, it wasn't a prepared answer, which I liked about you. And the way you responded shows that uh, you believe in reward and punishment which is where most people don't like in organization. So for me, I would say, prepare, practice your technical skills. As a data analyst, please, there are, I know there are so many tools that people use, we can know everything, but whatever you decide to, whichever one you decide to pick, please be good at it. But for me, I would say you need Excel. You need to have knowledge of Power BI and you need to do Python as well. Maybe a bit of Python, depending on what your organization is looking at. And now organizations are even moving towards AI as well. So please just keep practicing your soft skills and technical skills. Research the organization for every organization you are interested in and how you fit into that organization. So that will be it for me. In case anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you so much, Madam Janet. Thank you for being there. Um, I'm sure people have questions, but maybe they'll be asking you specifically. I uh, will move to the next person. So Toby Kazim, please, um, you can take it away. You have the floor. Hello, Toby, just to be sure. I hope you're still good. Good. Please go ahead. Okay. Your mic is low. Maybe you want to come with us. Sorry, we'll, 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 we'll broke your sleep. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. you. can. If you have a slide, it's fine. If you want to, let's see your screen. I mean, let's see your face, please. You can just take it away. Go ahead, please. Okay. You can see my screen. Let me know. Can you see my? We can face? see your camera, but we are seeing the roof. <laughs> okay, I I stay slow sometimes. All right, you can see your face. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Um, think um, 
Coyote have said it, and then Jeanette added to it. I think for me, um, I've, I've Coyote said uh, interview. It actually means um, when it comes to interview, I'm not a superstar because I I think so. I've not had many of them. I only had few. So and I believe for you to to get to the interview stage, you must have to, um, passed through some stages, uh, submitting the application. So you almost at the almost getting the job. So one thing important is preparation for you to get the interview. Um, though I had when I when I migrated, I as Kyle said, keyword is important for you. So it was very surprising to my friend that I got interview from the second day I arrived Canada and I got interview almost every week. Not one interview and what was useful to that, uh, what led to that was keywords. And then how my uh, CV or my profile was able to jump out, out of multitude. I've had people saying, I've been even people more technical than I do, uh, been and in this part of the world where we are, it's a multicultural world, yeah, multicultural environment here. Yeah, we have a lot of people. So, and I have people saying, had, uh, for three months, six months, even no single interview. So, one thing important is know your strengths, capitalize on it, and know your provide. Uh, try to work on it, uh, to use necessary keywords. So, and when you get the interview, the next thing is to prepare it. As Jeanette said, I believe um, each interview is actually different. So you have to prepare differently. So, and then once you have an interview, so you prepare both way and ready for any kind of thing that can happen. Sometimes, it might go beyond what you think. Like, can you share your screen? I've, I've had an interview with a very senior person. Would the person has worked with Microsoft for like, as a senior person in Microsoft, not, not program manager, developer, senior. So most people we know in Microsoft are program manager. I'm talking about someone that have led technical team in Microsoft for 10 years move from Microsoft after like 10 years, move to AWS, and then is now leading a, a, an oil and gas as a chief technical officer or something like that. You know, when that kind of person is asking you a question, you know it, must, it will be more technical. And then I have a lot of interviews saying, giving you scenarios and telling you, okay, bring up your screen. How will you solve this scenario? So it can lead to a lot of things. I've had interview with different kind of people, white, Indians, African, a lot of people with different ideas. So one of the things is if you can prepare, know the kind of people that will interview you. So is is if you can get a clue, it's also better. I'm talking from a multicultural perspective now, because oh yeah, where I stay. The culture is different from how we are in Africa. And then the culture is actually different from Europe. The way Canadian takes things is different from the way UK guys do things and is actually different. I also work with a multi-global company. So our methodology is even different from UK, from our sister company in UK. So I think from the multicultural perspective, you can get a clue on who it's actually difficult sometimes, but I think if you can get a clue about the person interviewing you, you might actually get some clue of the kind of thing the person will ask. If you can get a clue about the person, I think the next thing is to check again the job description and then map out how you're fitting into the job description. 
and then once you map it out, you know your strength and your weakness. And I would say capitalize on your weakness because sometimes that is where we get uh, knocked on the head. So because I'm very sure every one of us can speak about our strengths. If we are so good on Nezel, yeah, they will know. But the little bit of where you are weak on, someone might actually pick a question on it and then uh, it might blow everything in the wrong way. So I think you should work on your weaknesses before the interview. It's, it does not necessarily you start learning a new skill. Just look for things that you can talk about, about those things highlighted in the job description because for you to uh, for you to get to an interview stage, then it means they have left almost 200 people. I'm talking from the perspective I know they have left almost 200 people to come and say, okay, let's interview this guy. And that's why I said, from my own perspective, I'm not, I'm not a prof. Though I had a, a lot of interview series of when, especially when I migrated. Uh, but my current job, from my experience, uh, I never applied for the job. And as I a lot of job, I didn't really like applying for job. Sincerely speaking, I believe if when it's time to move or when it's time to change then someone will call me. I don't know. That's my belief. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to share that because I have some couple of things that I know can speak for me when the times go. And why I don't like applying for a lot of jobs is most of them I don't fit in. I don't fit in for the, within the culture or within what they use. Uh, from the beginning, I'm leaving school. I've all worked with Microsoft partners. So it's not I don't like change. So when I see job talking about oh, an entire full stack or another stack that is not Microsoft, I know, oh, this I might blow off. Uh, I don't think I fit in. So, so I don't like applying for a job. And luckily, the one I target, I think I always get it right sometimes. So I, I focus on targeted jobs which I know I can deliver and then and sometimes I have also noticed uh, uh, a lot of people that comes at where I or where they have seen I'm good on so it's it's always weird when someone that someone just called me or a lot of uh, messages from HR uh, so I, I will find it weird when someone send me a message or like a recruiter saying he wants me and I know I'm not fit to this role. So that happens. So uh, one of the things that you should know, so for my experience on my current job, I never apply. One way or the other, they found me. And then we shoot for the interview. And one of the things, so the job role has three aspects. I know one very well. The second one, or uh, intermediate level. The third one, I don't know anything about. So you know what I did? I forgot about the one I know very well. I forgot about the middle one. I know I can still find a way. I focus on the one I didn't even know anything about. I called my friends that I believe they know something about it. And they explained to me, oh, this is what you do. And I pull up a sandbox and I, before the day of the interview, so prepare myself and then uh, on that. And when interview comes, as I said, as what Coyote said, value. The way you speak to the person, sometimes it's about, it's not about you knowing everything. It's about, does this person fit to this value? And those ones we can demonstrate that. And luckily for me, the person focus on the, my own weakness. And because I have done a lot of reaction, like sandbox, practical, I was actually answering those questions. So preparation is also a key, especially looking through the job description. When they said, oh, we need so, so, so tools, and you have not used that tool before, just try your best to quickly do something. 
it might it's it's not necessarily big something. It might just be just a bit. Just do something on it so that when question comes from there, you might actually uh, be able to speak to that. So uh, something about also data. I, I I didn't like calling myself a data analyst because most of my job now is on because I always say data analyst is different from BI developer and my role is actually on two major things, BI developer and, and data engineering. So, and I work on a complex system, Microsoft ERPs. So, so when recruiting for firm using, you ought to work on, for example, maybe someone is looking for a role for someone analyzing data on Microsoft stack. They will be talking about uh, normal stuff. They might actually focus on the ERP better. So just a moment, Toby. You have one minute more. Yeah. So I think it's majorly to focus on uh for for us. Yeah. If if we have chance to interview someone, is how they understand the underlying data. So how can you how do you understand the data? It's not about to me. Everybody have said portfolio, portfolio. But sometimes we have seen a lot of people they did a lot of portfolio, but they really un even un understand the data. So you must be able to start with what happens to your data and then uh, also demonstrate how you can elicit, data, uh, elicit requirement. So I think that's, that's it from my side. Um, um, I really appreciate the time. Uh, so if I have any question also, uh, I will try to respond to that before the course end. Thank you. Thank you so much. So you can see that Toby offload a lot of things for the technical people and the non-technical people. He's talking directly from what he does and his experiences. And that is the take home for everyone. You can see the way Carol Day Paul is that out. You can see the way Janet Paul is I mean, a heart out. So Toby also just did the same thing. And if you leave him, of course, it's just going to go ahead and pour uh, uh, a lot of things out. I know these people personally, so I know what they have done and what they can do. OK, so we'll move to the next person. Eddie, please, are you ready? Oh, well, yes, I am. Thank you. Please, you can shoot. Let's see your face. If there is no slide, yeah, then you can just continue. Okay, can you see Emil? Yes, I can see. All right, great. Thank you so much for um, inviting me to this. Uh, oh, just a moment. Someone's hand okay. is off. Sure. Lola, your hand is off. Are you confirming this, that you are seeing him or you have a question? Maybe it's just confirming. Thanks, sir. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And I'm so glad to be in this platform. Um, this is where I started from in my career. Um, thank you, Jerry Computers, as well. Um, so my name, as you know, is Eddie Okonkwo. I am a senior business analyst with uh, the Cabinet Office with the Ontario government in Canada. Um, my other colleagues and facilitators have said it all. Um, so now I'm going to just be you guys as a normal, informal way and tell you a bit about uh, my own side of the story and how I landed my job and um, to where I am right now. So um, I migrated to Canada in 2022, in May. And um, as uh, Mr. Coyote said, um, you have to have a selling point. And that selling point was what landed me my first job in the Bank of Montreal as a business analyst, which is being a Microsoft certified trainer. Thanks to Direct Computers again for that. They encouraged us to try and enroll for that and become one, which I, which I did. I quickly jumped into it. So that's a uh, one takeaway from you guys for you guys. Um, they they needed someone with a vast experience or data um, or insight about um, Power BI data analysis in general. And that was one of the key things that they picked for my resume and that was called for the interview. I got a job less than a month that I came to Canada. Um, and that thing I did was being free. I did not hold back. I did not like, um, how do I put it? I did not stay uptight. I let myself lose. 
I was very friendly with the interviewers. I was smiley all true. They like people, they like to see people's skills in people, you know, they like to know that you can communicate, you can feel free to discuss one or two things with any, anybody at all, which I did very well. You know, I tried to, during the interview, I tried to like digress the whole, you know, ever, um, the whole, um, how do I put it, the whole moment. I tried to make it ease. I eased it off a bit by, you know, oh, nice. I love having coffee as well. I saw someone having a sip of coffee. I'm like, oh, I think I really need that. You know, stuff like that. Just try and like, you know, be free, be friendly. And they're like, oh, wow, I wish I could give you from here. You know, stuff like that. Um, that was my actually, that that was my, um, the, the tip I used um, in all the interviews I had. I had multiple interviews based on my um, selling points to be an MCT. Um, I was able, I was able, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I was able to use that to make them feel free with me. And they just liked the way I was uh, communicating with them. And another thing I did also was showcasing my talents in terms of the works I've done, the analysis. And they also like experience here. And don't get me wrong, if you haven't worked in any company, if you haven't worked anywhere, and you have projects you've done personally, that's an experience, you know. You can share that then you can actually tell them that you know what my resume might not be up to date in terms of my experience as work but i have done loads of projects on my own share your screen with them show them your dashboard show them your visualization show them what you've done talk to them like this is what i did this is it's a pretty data very well for them to understand you know that way they know this guy knows his stuff right and um they they, they become to get more um um, comfortable with you and understand that yeah, this guy can handle this. Another point again is also aligning your experience based on the job description. You know, um, you give them examples of the experience based on what they're looking for for the role. For instance, they're looking for someone with a, let's say, good communication skills. You can just tell them, all oh, right, I I I conduct various trainings for people back home, you know, in the, on, a, on a monthly basis. I do this interview with them, I communicate to them well, I give them opportunity to ask questions, I just find time to um, solve problems with them, I find time to, you know, stuff like that. Just base your experience on what they're actually looking for in the role. That's very key. And um, while, in, while in BMO, because I, as I got into Canada, I got the BMO job, in less than three months, I got a call from uh, the Ontario government. Because when I first came, I'm like, I cannot waste a single moment here. So G Mr. Julian knows the <laughs> knows the story. I cannot miss a single um, moment here, just trying to while away time. I applied to multiple multiple organizations. Multiple, I, I couldn't even keep track of it. And also, it's good to also re refine your CV based on where you apply to. That's very key as well. Don't just use one CV and send to multiple places. No. You need to put in the sacrifice. And I'm so, so sorry. I'm very sorry if I didn't say this. The very, for me, I believe in God so much. I believe in God so much. I'm sorry this <laughs> to bring that up. I use that as my key. You know, um, I always go to him first. I pray to him first before I do anything. And he actually directs me. He puts things in my mind. He directs me on what to do, what to say, and how to say. I don't know how I do it, but it's God. That's very key um, for those that believe in God. And if you don't, please try to. <laughs> yeah, so um, that was my that was my first go person. And he saw himself, he made himself available whenever I called, you know. Um, and he used people like the Jerry Computers, Mr. GD and Mr. DG, the Chooks and others to um, put me through in the line of being a data analyst. Because uh, when I first started, I wasn't, before I moved to Canada in 2022, um, I was just a, I was a worker with NMPC and um, I haven't had any um, skills in data analysis at all, but um, prior to come, prior coming here, like I had to consult one or two people. I did the research and asked around to know exactly what's the key um, role that people, what's the most searched for jobs in um, Canada. And I realized I was in the analysis space. So I, I tried to equip myself very well in that space. I met today and um, the journey continues from there. You know, 
that's another thing to do wherever you want to go to if you want to walk abroad try and figure out the most sought out job so you can like um, equip yourself to that job you know like i didn't have any knowledge at all in analysis before i came here you know so um yeah basically that's it and um i i got i got the job um like i said i'm just just doing you guys i'm just talking to your friends you know so nothing so formal i got a job um in bmo three months after i got a call from the entire government and the interview went again as well and i did the same thing you know my mct was a selling point for me that's why they got um they tried they called me because they said i was on a, a microsoft certified trainer and they asked I me how can you. i sorry does anybody want to say something no go ahead maybe someone's mind okay. is taking but let's go oh, okay oh, yeah yeah so um they asked they asked me how will i use that to um maybe feed the organization i'm like yo this is this is what i do i can help i can assist again because this most of the government staff here in ontario um they're transitioning into the whole ai it space more um they're kind of like um you might not believe it but some of them is to do the whole label uh, paper system you know and um they don't want they don't like have they're not that tech savvy as well so like a god <laughs> to them you know they're like oh the world would like your expertise to help you know train other people in the organization as well you know so that was a good selling point i used to get the job and also the way i interacted with them i was able to be free with them i was able to you know make one or two jokes you know have that um freedom with them you know they were able to like ask me one or two questions and i would answer them in the manner that there was no uh huddle of any kind in terms of being stiff and uh shaky i just felt very free you know they liked you to be free and open-minded you know um yeah like i said earlier the main thing because also did um while i that that landed the job in the ops as a business analyst um, first of all, and once you go into the government, it's hard for you to leave the government because it's one of the most chill jobs ever. And um, you have opportunities to navigate to other ministries once you're in the government. So um, it's a good tip as well. You just in case you find yourself in Canada, you can like to look for a government job. It has vast opportunities as well. And um, yeah, so that gave me an upper hand for me to like, get the job I am right now in as a cabinet of, in the cabinet office at the senior BA. Um, my work could tell for, my work could speak for me basically. You know, when I got there, I'm an in, I'm a kind of an introvert, but um, I try to be out there. You know, I try to speak out more often. I try to ask questions. There's no thing as a stupid question. You like to know that you want to learn, right? You like to know that you want to move ahead, forge ahead as well. And you like to see people working together be a team person be a team player you know um that also boosted me to where i am right now um, it was being a team player it was being because when i came into the lps i tried to um start a session i do this power bi lab i call it power bi lab so i called one or two colleagues in the office we came together once bi-weekly once every two weeks to you know have a platform where anyone that has problems with Power BI, we share problems together. We um, we work on things together. If you have any challenge of any kind, we put it out in the group there. We solve it together. We share materials together. You know, stuff like that it kind of like uh, gave me an upper hand in finding the job I am I am right now. And other jobs as well that I had I had to choose from. You know, I had options. You have to make yourself relevant. You have to make yourself visible out there as well. You know, um, yeah. So that's just how I got my current job. I am here right now in the senior BA. It's so like add value to people around me, and they, they like the aspect of me, and um, that's where I am now. So one good takeaway here, I'll, I'll, I'll like you also know, if you don't have a job, if you haven't had experience in working in a place, please don't give up in doing projects try and work on as many projects as you can um, that's an experience you know be able to be ready to be able to like interpret to whatever you do in the manner that they understand 
very, very key because some some job some um, jobs they require people with experience, you know, and some they don't. But um, it's good to have those as you go on, keep on working on different projects and different aspects. If it's HR, if it's communicate, if it's um, logistics, if it's whatever, whatever it is, just have multiple different type of projects, you know, Power BI and other stuffs, and also. Um, Try to know the company. That's very key as well. Try to read about the company you want to work with, um, so you can be able to know how to. Um, you can be able to know how to like uh, um, infuse or add or, or, or give them what's uh, give them what they need to know. You know, tell them okay, this is how I can add value to your company. I know this is that, and like for instance, I had an interview with one of the big pension companies here, owners. Um, they asked, how can you add value to the company? And based on my research, I saw a lot of things that I could add value to. I gave them the story. I can, you know what? I saw that in your, I read about your company. I saw that you guys do this, you guys do that. I think I can, I can help in doing this. I think I can help in doing that. And I said, oh, wow, this guy's actually um, up to it, you know. I didn't go for that. I went for the government job instead. I had the job, I went for the government job instead. You know, those are things that, um, Give your upper hands, you know, the ones to see that you're able to, um, um, like um, Kayode said, what are you going to bring to the table for them? What are you going to help them to? What are you going to make that better as an organization? You know, you would able to solve assets them as well. You know, so it's um, it's been a good road, and I thank God for that. And uh, a tip I'll also give as well is, like I said before, trying to align your experience based on the job description while doing the CV and also while in the interview, you know, let them know that this is like, for instance, I communicate very well or you, you're good in analysis. I've been looking for, looking for those that have analytical skills. You can let them know that I did, I created a dashboard for so, so, so people or I, I, did, read it, I did this project on this, 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 and it aligns to whatever they're looking for us in the role, you know, so. Those are very good takeaways because my other colleagues have said everything, every other thing that is relevant in terms of landing a job as a data analyst and BA. And when you come here, when you come abroad as well, um, you should be able to define um, what a BA is and what a data analyst is because they are different roles, right? Basically, a BA um, basically just interprets whatever a data analyst does to the stakeholders, right? And the data analyst analyzes the data and gives it to the BA. So you should know what you want to do. Do you want to be a data analyst or do you want to be a business analyst? You know, um, it's very key as well, so you don't conflict yourself. But they like both. If you can do both, it's an added advantage, which was my case, which was my case. You know, I started a data analyst, but I transitioned into a business analyst. And in all the jobs I've worked as a business analyst, I still showcased my data analyst and I to skills. You know, and that's really impressed them. You know that uh, this guy is more talented. You know, stuff like that. So um, those are the little tips I can give for now. And uh, please feel free to reach out if you need more questions. If you need more, if you have more questions, or if you need more insights and um, landing jobs here as well, um, I'm really glad and happy to help in any way I can. And yeah. That's, uh, I will actually leave a link as well because um, having someone like me to the glory of God, I I do referrals in the government, in the entire government. So um, I'll drop a link. It's open to even those outside the country. Um, like I said, you should have a selling point that will learn them to contact you. Um, so when you do so, I can do a referral and um, Try and link you up with the hiring manager before the interview so you can get to know the person. Just a tip. Um, I can help any way I can to help my brothers and sisters back home. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for that wonderful session, Eddie. So um, I see Vivian clapping. I expect that, and thank you, Vivian. She even dropped that. So you can see one of the advantages of coming together. So Eddie is saying that. It could also help if you want to, you get, so you can do something like that and refer you. So, um, Coyote said a lot of things. I mean, not just a lot of things, valuable insight points. So don't take anything everyone has said 
for granted, I beg you. Uh, one of the things that Eddie mentioned, he talks about community in a way that we are helping ourselves. So please let us not take that uh, for granted. I beg you, connect with these people, reach out and pick the point that you have mentioned. Now, is there any questions for them? Either you want to direct <laughs> it to them or you want to get the point. You can show with a raise of hand. I will go with that. If there is no around, you can now drop your question. So we, I need you to understand that their time zone is not ours. They are supposed to be sleeping. So if you have questions, please raise your hand. Then I'm seeing hands already. So I will go in that format, all right? Because I don't want to keep them too much here. So Balaji, please go ahead. I see your hand. <coughs> okay. Um... Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So my name is um, Bolaji Amfodu. I work with Fidelity Bank in Abuja. Um, my question is to the guys um, over there that have shared their experiences over the years and now they landed their dream jobs, I mean, so to say. Okay. My number one question is, does the kind of um, criteria, the, 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 the tag, to jobs here, does it apply over there where they say you have to be 26 years and below and uh, you must have had some five years experience? I mean, one of the speakers mentioned that the experience in Canada is enough to to be, to be work on projects. That's, that suffice when it comes to the aspect of experience. But um, the aspect of age institution, does it apply over there? Because, uh, I mean, in Nigeria here, I mean, most of us, if we're doing this thing, we're just looking at the consultancy aspects, considering the fact that is either you go to somewhere in your line of um, career as, a, as an experienced hire, but getting a new job or landing a new role at the certain age might be a bit difficult. Does it apply with you guys over there? Then secondly, um, if someone is looking for a job outside the shores of Nigeria, um, which agency is best to apply to? Is it the company itself? or the recruiting agent that you're meant to, which one is which one is the best uh, bet to look, to reach out to when you're asking for it. And thirdly is, um, are there many um, options of um, working from your location or, I mean, your um, virtual, or what's it called, work from home um, aspect of this job? Are there a lot of them where you can just stay back in your country and just deliver on projects and send to them some sort of consultancy, not like a full time um, recruitment for those that know they are not really willing to migrate to the country, to other countries? Thank you. So, uh, Carl, did you want to take that? Uh, Toby, Eddie? Yeah, yeah, I could, um, I could answer a couple of them for you. So, first of all, in, in the first question regarding age limits, there, they, there's no discrimination here. It can be 50 years and you can land a job, right? They don't discriminate here at all in terms of age, race, or whatever. Especially more in the government side, there's no, and there's also no restriction in experience. Um, you can be a fresh out graduate, you can be, so with five years, they don't look into that. They don't discriminate experience as well. It just, it just happened. They passed that as a law a um, couple of years back. That they shouldn't look at experience in terms of hiring jobs. They should look at they should look at the years of experience rather in terms of hiring jobs. So um, you put in the aspect, no age restriction, no um, years of experience restriction as well. And um, for the uh, for the question about um, flexibility in working, um, yes, there are there are a lot of jobs that are very flexible. Um, like my my previous job as a business analyst in the government. I was to come into the office twice a week. It was a hybrid work. And now my current job, um, I'm not really expected to be in the office, probably just once a month. And I can work from anywhere. They're very, very flexible. I can work from anywhere. We have employees that are working from the US. We have employees working from uh, on the UK and so on. So it's just to search and look for a streamline where you want to the type of job you want. You can just Google it, jobs that work remotely, jobs that uh, they have hybrid system, etc., and you apply accordingly. And um, so I can't remind me of the third question. 
um, when when applying, is it better to go through the agency or the company itself? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, so my it's both both the plus. The agent agencies here they work they are very effective here as well. Um, if you have the access to the company, you shut your shut as well. Um, yeah, but the thing is that the agency they take from you. Whatever they pay you as normal, they have some bid for themselves. If you want it all, um, you can go direct to the company. You can see them on different social platforms. Um, I think um, the HR professional will give more insight about that as well. But that's based on my experience. My first job was through an agency. Um, the BMO job I got was through an agency, and I was um, I shared myself not not much. They took a little bit of it, but yeah, you know, it's uh, it could be it could be better. You know, so yeah. Thank yeah, you. Um, okay. Yes, Kyle, please go ahead. I can pick up from where Eddie has stopped. Eddie is very spot on. I'll start from the last thing he mentioned. Um, I think you just need to, to be clear about your options. Uh, first and foremost, if you're going through an agency, you need to know what are the merits of the merits, for example. An agency will obviously uh, take some part of the money. Uh, the advantage also is that they may actually also have a lot of filtered jobs. So they have targeted jobs, for example, and saves you the idea of the stress of, in quote, if you call it the stress, sort of, of searching. You know, they have all those jobs pipelined in that perspective, and they can sort of direct you to whatever they have in that sense. But bear in mind that they would obviously um, either charge you or, you know, they have a cost and all that. And they would be a middleman. Sometimes in some instances, I've had experiences where they sort of are because they also are negotiating for what, what works for them. So if they have a candidate that sort of favors them as well in what they get as well, they may sort of prioritize them over you as well. And on the other hand, uh, a company directly sort of means you're speaking directly to the people that are hiring directly face to face in that perspective, right? So it depends on what you want. I've had experiences where a recruiter, for example, reached out to me for some roles, um, global Facebook head office, for example, and uh, this was a recruiter. And after speaking to a recruiter for like two times, for example, she sort of passed me on to the internal teams. And I spoke to the internal teams until the very final stage, for example. Uh, but I picked a different job, uh, you know, at the end of it. But my point is, I still became friends with the recruiter. Uh, and she said, sent me other jobs that were also relatable in that perspective because she was trying to meet up with her own quota, right? So they're chasing their own quota in that sense, while the company is looking for a fit in, in there. So just think about the merits and what works. My advice generally would be um, think about. Think quietly, look at options, do your research, and then you know use as much as possible and know what the merits and the merits are. And speaking about the age restrictions, um, Eddie already spoke to that as well. But what I want to mention also is that the priority is about the value, like I said, you provide, for example. For entry-level roles, or if you're new in an environment, yes, it's usually harder, or you might need to prove a lot more in terms of value you can provide. And how do you do that? By what, uh, for example, I think um, uh, was mentioned earlier on this call, how do you have a portfolio? How do you show that you can provide value? How do you do something that you can show them, you know, that is relatable to what they're asking for in that sense, right? Uh, so that's what they look out for. But once you've gotten an experience in that space, or you have something that is convincing in that sense, it becomes very easy to get. So nothing about age or, or you know, whatever it is. There are some roles that require some levels of experience. So if you say three years, for example, uh, you may actually have worked in a place doing work for one year and the equivalence of that one year experience may be up to five years experience somewhere else depending on the volume and deliverables you did in that sense. So it's also about how you can communicate your, your experience, your value in terms of what you bring on board. And finally, the question around um, working from anywhere. Uh, as Eddie has said again, I know people who, for example, I work with a company that is based in Africa, for example. I only travel once in a while, for example. I work remotely fully. I know a lot of people who are in the tech space, who are in the data analyst space, who are in the data engineer space, software engineer space, who live in Europe, for example. Uh, maybe some of them do remote work fully. Some of them actually do some days, hybrid some days in the office, some days not in the office. Some of them actually have consultancy projects as well in that sense. So I think it's about your research. It's about what you're targeting to do. My general advice about searching for jobs will be start by asking yourself, um, what do I really want? Um, do I want to move out? Do I want to move out? When you decide that, then you now ask yourself, okay, what, what areas do I want to move to? Do I want to live in Canada, for example? Is it Europe? Is it Canada? Is it UK? Is it Americas? And then when you now do that, you're not able to say, okay, so um, I have said whether I'm moving or not. I've said what continent I want to go to or which continent you might do multiple places if you have more options. And then you're going to start saying, so what areas in these places are there? And what companies are sort of, the best companies or the companies that fits what I need in these areas and start researching and finding out those things 
are there recruiters in those spaces and then tailor it in that way um, a good way could be to document these things either use like an excel sheet or a google sheet and have different tabs for different countries that are considering them and start to pipeline those things and do your research in that perspective and then you'll be able to not eliminate based on the outcomes and other perspectives it's also very important to actually get mentors so people like eddie for example who can share with you or you know give you perspective people like janet as well so i'll just stop there for now and you know see like other people respond as well thank you so much rosemary you want to go next with your question but i hope they answer your question correctly so rose please go ahead your mic is muted okay, rose. Okay, yeah. go ahead, we can hear you now. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for this session. I really, really, you know, learned a lot from it. Okay, mine is more of personal. Um, um, thank God for this session again. I mean, for the past uh, three weeks now, I've been trying to reach out to friends and people that I've worked with that have relocated to Canada. Okay, so I have plans to go to Canada for bed. That will be visiting in the next couple of months. So, and I want to like maximize my stay. It will not just be, just go there to holiday and come back. In, you know, I want to take advantage of that period I'll be there. You know, I've been looking at, um, like there was something that happened to me when I traveled to UK. That was like four years ago. You know, I visited a friend in, in Aberdeen and she was in the rest of Aberdeen then. So one day she was going to school and I just followed her to school. And at the end of the day, I, I ended up getting into a seminar that I never knew I would be part of it. You know, and that really, really helped me in my career journey all this while. So I'm planning to come into Canada and I'm hoping to like, you know, get into some maybe conferences, seminars. So I'm just, you know, train, training to Eddie and TK and the rest of them in Canada. If there are opportunities, please, I would really like to, you know, key into that or plug into that, please. Thank you. That's all I have for to ask okay. for. No problem. So I'm sure Eddie and uh, Toby, they've heard. Yeah. Um, so there are actually um, seminars. We have there's this um, session called Black People in Tech. Um, they do very well, fantastic job. They try to like um, <clears throat> bring black people together and um, outsource jobs for them. If you don't have a job, they do like seminars. But I don't know where, when exactly you're coming, but I know the next event is going to be. Uh, just give me a second. Let me try and get out the next event date. Okay, I'll oh, be there from May to, be next May week. to oh, Okay, I'm okay. coming in May okay. and I'll be there till yeah, May to okay. August. Okay. So anything you think up here? Yeah, they, they I think they do they they um they do it like I think every month or every two months. But you can also do the research online. You can just look for seminars that are being held in Canada, and um, I'm sure you can go to find you're gonna find one or two. They can join for free. And you can also streamline your sets with black people because it's more um you get greater chances that way. Um but don't 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 limit yourself. You can go out um more than that. Just say. Yeah. Okay, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you so much. Others, don't worry. Um Eddie has is seen this, all right. So you can always reach out to them too. Reason why we share the contact. And you are seeing that Kyle is willing to to help so you can see the mentality that these people have so it's not about them not opening someone said you have four cold water <laughs> that's not that is that you have exposed everything all right god is dropping a message everyone you can take a look at it so i'll call the next person um vivian please go ahead vivian please okay go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will be quick. I have a couple of questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the speakers. Thank you, Mr. Wajide, for putting this together. Um, I think I'll direct this question to Mr. Kayode Kolade. You said something about um, belonging to a community like this one now, that this Excel community. Now, is this something you can put in your CV 
or it's something you have to talk about when you get to the interview stage, you know? And if it's something you can put in your CV, which area, where do you chip it in actually? Where does it fall into? That's one. Then for, um, for Janet, please, you talked about the CV thing and all of that. You know, these days, everything is about ATS, ATS, you know, streamlining your CV. So my question is, is it even possible now? Or what are the chances of one getting a job without, you know, doing an ATS screen, taking your CV through this ATS um, scanner or whatever it's called? And then you also talked about soft skills. When you say talk about yourself, it's good to come out and say stuff like I'm versatile. I'm a problem solver and all of this, I believe is also okay. Like it's best to not just go random, maybe tailor your soft skills as well to what you have on the job. Um, it's also good to tailor your skills, your soft skills to what you have on the job role or description, right? So those are my questions. Yes. Okay, uh, I can get started. Uh, your, your question, pretty much um, about being in community, what's the value, how do you sort of communicate uh, being in communities like this, for example? Um, and there are all sorts of communities that can actually belong to. This is an example. I gave you an example, for example, uh, being data yeah. analyst, um, I know that Janet and the rest of people can actually share, Eddie can share with you. There are different platforms you can be on. Um, for example, in my short experience, I know that there are platforms like Kagu where you can be on, for example, uh, maybe be there, meet people, build communities and all that in that perspective. There's a community also uh, called ADP List as well, where people have mentors that people can support with you. LinkedIn is also mm -hmm. a community, for example, where you can be on. I just gave examples of different communities. Yes, Excel is another community. And communities have different things they add to you or different values they bring to you. So think about value again. Like I said earlier, value is really important. The first thing they give you is one access, right? Um, you yeah. do not have that access to everyone on this call together if you were not part of this community, for example. When I put this mm -hmm. title, uh, this myself, for example, for a few people, people were asking me, people from all over, because I have people, I, I do travel a lot, people from from Uganda, from Kenya, from, from the US. So people were asking about the session, you know, asking, oh, uh, when can I have a session with you? When can I do this? Or oh, what is society about? Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, it's a good community and all that. People are hearing about it based on the about the community. So you would never have known about this and they don't have access to join this just like you have, for example. So access to communities is very important as well. Um, Eddie will be, I did share something as well, a lot of communities in different places for different professionals and different communities and all that as well. In the Netherlands, for example, there's a Niger community that I have where people come there, ask questions, people share stuff and all that as well. Um, so that's about access, right? What does access give you? Access also gives you what I call exposure. Exposure blows your mind. Um, the point that someone who is on this call asking about this trip, for example, is one of the very important things you should think about as, 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 as people, especially as Nigerians. We, I never knew exactly that Rwanda was so beautiful and had opportunities until I got a job and moved and lived in East Africa for two years in my life. And I didn't want to leave Rwanda, for example, right? A lot of us don't know that those opportunities exist if you don't travel. And it's not expensive to go to Ghana or to go to those countries, those go to those places, to have opportunities to go there because exposure always helps you. So communities like that also gives you exposure. What also happens is it gives you growth, right? If you are there, for example, you've met Eddie, who's someone who can mentor you, who can share with you his experience. Uh, you've met Janet, who can tell you whatever it is, who can challenge you, who you can see that, oh, maybe he started in Nigeria. I used to work in Nigeria as a country surveyor, right? I studied that course and I never did anything in that course for a long time. And now I'm doing what I'm doing in my role, for example, I have the C-level role, for example, where I work. And I started from somewhere in Nigeria, right? Just like everyone else, I may be on the call in that perspective, and it's growth. So it shows you, challenges your mind to tell you that, oh, this is possible, for example, this is what is happening, for example, uh, in, in how it is. So it challenges you to growth. The activities that can happen in those spaces, maybe like Kagu, for example, you have projects you can work on, coordinate on, and then you can use those projects and show them. When they ask you, you know you've had experience in those areas and you've done those things before, you've heard about them before. It communicates the value you can bring and let the interviewee or the recruiter know that this person can bring the value or can deliver what I want in my job as well. So you can use those and put those things on your profile, right? And say, I've done this project, I've done that project, I've done that project, based on what you've done in those communities in that sense. One other thing also it does is uh, it shows that you're not just only work, work, work focused. It shows extracurricular intentional activities, for example. 
I want to know mm -hmm. that you are possible, that you are you can work in, in people's teams, you can work with teams and work with people. How do I know? It's because I feel like you've been a part of a community and you're active in that community. It shows that you're not just about work, work, work. And then you can actually communicate or code this in teams as well. So those are some of the examples that you have. And in terms of putting on your CV, for example, your profile, uh, you can always have a section for extracurricular activities, for example. Or, or on my LinkedIn, I put other things that I do there. Maybe I support or mentor a company or whatever it is. It shows people what I do. And so people know that besides my leading organization, whatever I do, I also do coaching on the side, other things as well. So you always find creative ways to express these things. But think about all the values you can get from it. And also think about all the values you also can give in these communities because it also helps um, as a boomerang effect. So let me just stop there for a bit and let others respond. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much. So you can see, Kolade, we, you are now part of the community. We are, we are going to add you <laughs> so that you will drop in all of this for us. All right, um, Vivian, I hope they've answered your question. Over to you, Lolo. Not all. Okay. Thank you. A very big thank you to all our yes. facilitators. Thank you very much, sir and Mark. Mr. Sorry. Sorry. I think yes, there was please. a question. Asked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. Sorry, oh, I'll go ahead. Oh, yeah, when go it comes ahead, to okay, when it comes to CV, what I will say is for the ATS that will check, you need to tailor your CV based on the job description that you're applying for, like your job role. You need to put in the keywords like Mr. Coyote and Mr. Toby have said that will match the job description so that when they are saving CV out. So you need that. You cannot just be putting one CV for all the jobs application. It's not possible. You need to put in the work. Look at the job description. How do you fit in? How do I tell all my skills to match what they need? In regards to the soft skills, like if you are a data analyst, there are some skills that you will need, like soft skills that you need. You need, uh, I would say, uh, you need to pay attention to details. It will be key. Working in a team, every organization you work with, nobody wants you to work alone, even if you're an introvert. When you're at work, you need to be able to like work in a team. Good communication. If you're a data analyst, you should be able to communicate properly with your end users as well and management. Uh, I'll give an example like. There was an interview I attended. Everything was superb. And I always asked for feedback. And feedback was, uh, and they asked me, it was a simple question. Uh, how would you explain to an end user the difference between a primary key and a secondary key? And I did the explanation. But what I did not do was to give example in relation to their organization. And that was when the lady said, oh, because I didn't give example, like using example because they're a logistic company, I shall have used an example relating to that, that because of that, she cannot see me being able to communicate with their end users. So being able to communicate, even if they ask you questions in interview, you might be sound technically, but it would be nice if you can use stars or if you can even just explain, give examples. So I hope you understand the soft skills I'm talking about in this aspect as well. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Can I, can okay, I just thank add something? Go ahead, go ahead, please. Before, before Lulu goes ahead, just want to add something very spot on that Janet shared. I've had a lot of experience with filtering or having to look at people for even even for very senior roles maybe as mds and all that other roles as well across the board genetics is very spot on um the ats is obviously you probably know it means the application tracking system there's a lot of systems and softwares that people use sort of filter through. so a lot of people apply for roles um like any mentioned and in all those people that apply for roles they sort of are looking for the few at the top of the best of the best that can fit in those roles based on their conditions, for example. And to do that, they use a couple of different things. So for example, um, in the in all in the in back in the days, people just filter CVs one by one and check, but then advancement and tech, obviously, ATS can screen for you and all that. Um, something else that also happens is 
two different platforms like like LinkedIn, for example. Um, I, I have two very close recruiter friends who recruit in tech, for example. And one of the things they tell me every time is two ways. Your CV, and like I said, I talked about documentation, your CV and your document your progress and all that only gets you into the door gives you access, for example. So your CV, if your CV is right, your LinkedIn profile is right, it's good, it confirms, it gives you, it makes the recruiter or people are hiring feel, oh, this person may have, capital me, may have what I require to give value for this role. Then it now makes them, I think it was Eddie or, or, or Eddie or someone, I think it was Zenith who talked about, then they now speak to you, reach out to you, can I have a chat with you? That's the first thing that happens. And it's your CV or your profile that may have done that now. So that's the first part of the work. And what am I talking about in the sense of this? In the sense that, People do what I call Boolean searches for LinkedIn, searching for keywords, for example. So if your profile or CV does not have those keywords, your ATS will not filter your CV as one of the things you should consider, for example. People should consider, for example. If your LinkedIn profile doesn't have some of the keywords that relate to the JD, for example, it means they will not think about reaching you. People don't go through all LinkedIn profiles, start checking everyone and all that. The recruiter platform on, on LinkedIn gives you a place where you can literally search or type in keywords for advanced searches and it filters to you a list of profiles that fit into those keywords or those Boolean searches they have. Those are called something x ray search as well. So it's important to know that if you have those x boxes or those skill sets, but you don't have ways of articulating them on your CV or your profile in the right way that gets the right attention, then you probably will not get into the bucket of those that they will reach out to and then start to have interview questions from. It's only when they speak to you that you can now obviously start telling them what you've done. But if you don't do that in the first place, it doesn't get in the space. And one final thing to tell you about that is we are in an advanced world. You have something that can do the work for you. It's called AI. Chat GPT is very helpful. This is the advice people when I speak about career growth and advancement is just copy the JD of the job you're applying for, for example. Right? It might be a lazy way or a good way. Thank God technology is there for us. Copy it and then ask Chat GPT, for example, which is free, by the way. I don't know if it's still free, but type in there and say, can you please summarize how my CV would be to reflect these JDs, for example, or these things, for example, or what are the keywords that I need for a role that is entry level in data analysis, for example. It will give you the keywords uh, that I there, or say, what are the top keywords that recruiters are looking for through ATS system, through the ATS system to get for, to have for, for this role in that sense. They will give you this. So use tech, you are tech related people, and then use that to your advantage, and then use those things and rephrase your CV, summarize your headings, Look at people's profiles, like Eddie, Janet, what do they have on their profile that sort of looks interesting? Continuously improve yourself and see how you can add to those things and help yourself as well. So just going to stop there and add to what you need to say. Thank you so very much. Thank you. So Lolo, go ahead. Lolo, your mic is muted. Okay, a very big thank you to all our facilitators. So my question is almost like going to chip into what Mr. Kyrie said, you said we should continuously improve ourselves. So I'm coming from a biological science background and I'm in my infant stage of being a data analyst. So most times when I get interviews that my colleagues or my friends send to me, I'm always seeing masters in this and MBA. And I'm like, okay, so which one would you think that you suggest that a data analyst should go into the masters or an MBA? Yeah. Can I speak to that? Yes, Toby, go ahead. Okay, so on that note, um, I think first thing, you just have to continue or whatever you're doing at the infant stage because everyone of us passed through the infant stage. Uh, the stage uh, for varies for each one of us. Some of us were so lucky within three months, we are there. Uh, some took more than a year. So, but one thing I will advise, or uh, which Kayode has also emphasized on, you need a selling point. You need connections. I can tell you, at least I might say, what I do, millions of people can do the same. So, one of the things that I use was going for conference at the infant stage, and Kayode have said, Try as much as travel. Spend your money at the infant stage, especially on conference sometimes. It helps. At the infant stage, I've, I've been to a lot of conference involving professors. I've been to a lot of places. So would there you meet people? And I can tell you my first job also, it was from Data Science Africa, Abuja 2018. I met someone there 
And when the person saw me the second time, he was ready to refer me on the spot. And the referral gave me the job. So I, I love conference too. And I always tell myself, I go every year, at least I must attend one conference. No, and I love that. I have a couple of conference ahead of me this year too, in Europe, Netherlands, Germany. So sometimes is the money sometimes is big, but is sometimes you meet people that they refer you. And this part of the world where we are, referral is key, especially in Canada. They prefer to hire someone, someone referred to them, even when the person does not know all than you they didn't know at all. So I think you should you should try to look for a selling point through conferences, meeting people big, meeting some people, or uh, looking on MBA and masters. I don't really think it matters much. Sometimes they put it there, but sometimes you can go behind those uh, description with people. Uh, if, for example, if GD, I said I need someone, or like how Eddie said it also, and GD through one of you, I might actually be comfortable. I, I won't even pull out the job uh, job description outside there because I know someone that can refer people. So conferences and community do a lot. Meet new people, do a selling point when you meet them. It might be something, it might not even be related to data analysis. It might just be talking about growth in Africa. And then they, you caught their attention and they like you. And the next time you reach out to them, they are ready to refer. And some people I can tell you, if they refer 100 people to some employee, em, employer, they will hire all of them because they believe in their integrity. So I think that should be that. I'm focusing on MBA. You can, the, the other way to go around this is through connection. So Lolo, let me know. Um... How did you want to react? Yes, to um, I know that what Toby rightly said may not be what we may want to hear, but I will emphasize it again, unfortunately. Um, coming from someone who just finished an executive MBA, um, additionally, I didn't do it until last two years ago, for example, right? Uh, and I know you read biological sciences a lot specifically. Like you said, I read country surveying, for example, and I am a C-level executive with an NGO that cuts across four or five countries in Africa right now, right? I have four MDs who report to me directly. I didn't learn that from country surveying. Um, and I want to move to something that like Eddie mentioned earlier on, uh, without, without apologies, that I believe strongly in God. God sort of orchestrates your, your path and your ways, for example, if you sort of you know go back to him in that sense regularly, for example, in my perspective, in my opinion. And so everything I've done from my role in country surveying to working as a project manager in construction, I worked in Shell to working in Jumia e-commerce and all that, to working in a company called Taylor's Contact, managing visa or sourcing for the UK government in Nigeria as country director. All those roles I did, I think God sort of led me through because all those roles, each of the roles I got after was from something I did in a previous role before that linked me to that role. My current role, uh, people, uh, some of people actually even referred me, for example, right? So I'm saying that first and foremost, seeking and realizing where your source is. Uh, for me, it was God and knowing that everything sort of works together. Even if I don't have the requirement in that perspective, if I can communicate the value I, I offer. And every single choice I had to do a job, I did it at my, to my best, for example, which is why for the last three jobs, for those that I've had, I've, I've, I've got in, for example, I didn't apply to any of them, for example. It was referral, like Toby mentioned earlier on. So it's important to realize what your source is. To realize that this is and look at what do you have what do i have right now particular sciences what else do i have some skills in doing data some courses i've done bootcamps i've done whatever it is what do i have what do i need to get to where do i need to get to and you know where you're going to get to what do i need to get there for example realistically asking people like mentors like toby uh or janet or eddie here and say what are the things they did for example and in some cases you realize that as nigerians we are very certificate focused we feel like oh if you don't have that master you will not get there for example in that sense I got to where I got to, well, even though I did some short courses, without a master's. I did I had a BSc in content surveying from Obama Law University in Ilefe, right? And it took me through getting jobs. People reached out for me from Facebook and other places and all that based on my profile because I had done other things in every job I'd gotten after that. So it's important to note that uh, and realize the details of your profile and all that and remember all those things. And finally, I'll touch on the master's and MBA thing. If you now eventually now say, oh, for myself, I want to really do one, 
right? I usually advise that people should actually test and try and experience a couple of jobs, have some experience in those, those jobs before you now know what you want. I feel like a master's uh, sort of limits to a specific area. And so you need to be sure, have an idea of a master's in a specific and applied environment, for example. You may do a master's in statistics or something, for example, and I realize that in three years, after working, you probably have interest in another field, for example, in that sense, right? I took X 10 plus years to decide to do an executive MBA, right? Because I wanted to have that, because not because it was giving me the next job, for example, to start with. So think about why you want the, the master's. Don't be don't be oppressed by what people put in their profile and say hey, this role must do a master's. I've hired people who who didn't have a master's and the role said they needed master's as a requirement because they communicated value they could actually provide that I didn't feel like a master's holder can give. There are many master's profile holders that I actually interviewed. I was hiring for an MD for one of my countries in Rwanda recently, and then I had people who had done master's who had traveled abroad and everything. And then I eventually ended up, ended up picking a lady who lived in the country because she could communicate the value she was giving. So do not let that uh, deceive you, but think about all these things we've all said, and I, I believe that you sort of get some direction as well. So I hope Thank the you answer very much. is good. Yes, sir, right. thank you very much. Okay. Ganiat, please. Thank you so much for all the values. Thank you, God bless you. So my question is a bit personal. I've been trying to get a job that can sponsor a research. So I've been doing some research on job openings in UK, Canada, and Europe. There's few job rules for data analytics. I figure most organizations prefer referrals and hardly publish the job openings. How do you go about reaching out to the recruiter of organization, not knowing whether there is an opening for the role you are looking for or not? If it is open, how will you know the sponsor for the role? Or will you advise the person to move to the desired country first, maybe through education and start the job applications by then? That's my question. Thank you, the answer. Um, I could start. Uh, uh, there's no one size fits all in my perspective, right? Um, I used to work with um, I used to work with the UK government in and managing visa source processing. So I knew a lot about people applying for visas and traveling around, leaving Nigeria and all that for jobs and all that. So different routes. If you want to relocate out of Nigeria, well, this is not the session for that. But I'm just trying to share with you that a different route. You could either um, one get either you're going to school um i mean don't i mean you want to go and study and then get the course or get a degree and then from there look for opportunities in there depending on the environment what to provide you for example another opportunity can be that oh you get a job from wherever you are and the job migrates you and moves you in in that sense uh, another opportunity may be you sort of do a proper migration route which is maybe immigration to canada um you know you feel and you meet some criteria some cutoffs and then you get immigrated and then you are now settling in and you're now looking for a job so like Three basic things. The other path, maybe your partner, different family, whatever it is, but these are like the key areas of ways to get to get to migrate, for example. And all of this opportunity sort of sort of has different perspectives or different things you need to consider in that perspective. If you're going to go to a place, travel and then look for a job, your visa conditions may not permit a couple of things and all that in that perspective. Um, if you're going to study, it requires some upfront money for school fees and all that to think about in that sense. I usually always say that the easiest and most convenient that one that people do not even realize is that the best way to migrate, even Canada, for example, Toby and they don't know how they moved, whether they got a job first or whether they migrated first. But sometimes to migrate, you need to spend a lot of money and keep you know, all their money, I have proof of funds and everything to, to get it to travel. But I say the easiest way to actually get it, get to live abroad or, for example, study abroad or whatever it is abroad and work abroad is by your value like how do you what are the like i said earlier what are the things that these jobs sort of require for example how do you now build your profile or communicate that value in that sense to get to that point for people who are there how have they done it for example how can you maximize those levels there are countries where you need to get in there yes because they need to check that you have a stay and all that to get the job but there are other countries where they can literally sponsor you and fly you in and you can get that by research a lot of companies I see are customer, people do not know that they sponsor you. But when you check the companies and check their profiles or their websites and their career pages, you can see that, oh, sponsorship are available for these shows or not. So you can literally see that directly when you research them. And you can actually, a hint to actually start that is by looking out for very big multinational companies, companies that exist across different parts of the world, for example. Uh, 
normal, the normal, you know, normal big companies, but there are other companies that we don't know that exist around around those those different countries around the world. And then you can check their websites and just begin to check for those things. So I think to wrap it up, I think it's about research, it's about deciding what, what direction works, and then you would always find companies, even small companies who sponsor visas. There's a company that the grocery company right in the Netherlands who actually is sponsored. I know two people who they brought from Nigeria and they are working and they live in here, for example, in that sense. So I'll just let the other people respond as well. Any other response for Ghana before I call Victor? Yeah, I think um, Kyle said it. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can migrate. And he has mentioned, I think, all the ways I know too. So, and also to uh, to add to it, I think you should start from somewhere. Uh, value, Kyle, they have been mentioning that thing a lot. So, because sometimes a lot of people thought migration is the is the solution. I don't think so, because we have a couple of people here, even people that are more experienced than me, they could not get what they want. So, I think start from where you are. Uh, if your values speak for you, they will grab you and do your research. That's what I can advise. Start from where you are. Continue is not easy uh, for some of us too. Uh, it's not easy like that, but I think we start from where you are and also on data part. From my experience, uh, because I work with data, it's actually tough for them to to allow you working outside the chore of their country because of data privacy. So, and I think that's what I've noticed. So it's easier for them to recruit DevOps working from Nigeria or move them. But for data, I've noticed that uh, because of a lot of data privacy, sometimes you need, even I work full time remote, you need to be in this country. If I'm to be travel uh, outside Canada, then I might need to inform them, do some VPN for me because I work with clients that don't want to allow their data go outside Canada. So that's what I've noticed. But I think uh, start from where you are, keep pushing. Uh, if the values speak for you, they will, they will bring you out from the pole. Thank you. Thank, Kade, you, thank you want you to so say much. anything to whatever to be said? No, no, thank you so much, sir. Okay, that means you are fine. So, Victor, please go ahead. All right, thank you, Kayode. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Toby, and everyone that, and Jenny, too. I appreciate your insight. My question is kind of related to what someone has asked here earlier, especially because me, I'm from medical background, so I've done a boot camp last year. I've been able to land some interviews. I noticed even landing an interview is not an easy task because we all say we should as in, craft our CV to align with the JD. Because most of the JDs will tell you that they need somebody with, even if it's an entry level, they will tell you like five years experience, seven years experience, somebody that have domain knowledge in marketing, supply chain, or so, so depending on what the job the the company that wants the data analyst or BI developer. Is you understand depending on the setup you get. So all this why some might even say they want somebody with AWS experience, but they are looking for a data analyst, somebody that have cloud knowledge, somebody that have Microsoft Associate uh, certification. They keep saying, and someone that even have BSc in statistics, mathematics, computer science. You get. So in as much as we try as much to craft this JD to align, uh, to craft our CV to align with the JD. Sometimes you will find out that even the JD doesn't reflect who you are because you don't come from such a background. Most times when they, when you, no matter how you do it, at the end, they will, we always receive, unfortunately, we have moved on with somebody that closely aligned with what we want. You know, you get a rejection. And when you land an interview, they will likely ask you, where have you, how, where have you been working? Like me, I learned from an online platform in Canada, but I live in the UK. I will always tell them that I have not worked as a data analyst in the UK, but I've worked remotely with a company in Canada after I have trained as a data analyst. And they will ask me, where are you working at present? And I will always tell them, I'm working in health sector and so, so and so. You get, and this is like a true note because they are looking for someone who have, have who have experience in the UK. So 
with all this explanation, how can we be able to navigate and be able to like get this job? Because me, <laughs> according to the slogan, and we don't agree for anybody this year, I really want to land this job as a data analyst or as a BI developer. So <laughs> I don't know if oh, I've okay. made sense, please. They will answer you, Kyle, and others. Yes. It made, it made a lot of sense. I don't, maybe Janet, you want to go first? No, no, no. So you said you are in the UK. So yes. as I think we have mentioned the key thing. See, let me give you a scenario. I can relate to that. Even here in Canada, if they place a, I know Eddie can also uh, testify to that. If they place a job interview, and they say seven years of experience, if you put five years of experience, they will tell you they are looking for seven years. But I can tell you they can actually recruit someone of two years based on referral. But because they don't know you, they actually like withdraw. So what I will advise this, please, there's a lot of, I've been, I was in the UK, I think a few months ago. There's a lot of user group you can join in the UK. UK is even, UK do a lot of community things. Let me give you a scenario. If I need someone, or uh, like my company is looking for someone and they are ready to release him to me to accept my referral, I can tell you, I won't place any job description anywhere. I will just call GD, call my people in Alpha. You understand something like that? We have done a couple of that a lot. So join, look for a lot. Where are you in the UK? Look for a lot of user group in the UK. There's mm. a lot. Newcastle? West Midland. Just look for user group or conferences, but targeted user group or Microsoft virtual training. I've been in UK. I was at Excel Center, London in October. I even fly from Canada and I met my friend just to go and meet my friend there. It was just to meet a lot of people. So I think you should try that. If you try that, you will see it to be more easier. And then they might actually, you might actually convince them. I know it's actually difficult convincing them based on your story, but I think use people and use God. Everybody have been talking about God. <laughs> use God too. So, so, so thank you, Toby. Janet, is in the UK. Oh. <laughs> yes, let me come with that. Uh, what uh, Toby said is on spot. Use your community. Your user group is quite handy. God as well. Then apart from that, in your current work experience and the one you are looking for, what are the transferable skills you feel you can apply in this new job? There are jobs that I've done, honestly, moving from business analyst to data analyst, and you don't even have the required experience. But what they want to see is how can your skill, your current skills, how can you transfer it to this next job? I think that is quite important. You don't need to lie, please, on your CV. Don't do that. But look at it. This is where I'm going to. This is where I'm coming from. How does it relate? So that will actually help. Thank you. So, Victor, I hope they have answered you. Sorry, yeah. just one thing. Yeah. Yes, go, uh, Kai, the guys. Janet was very spot on. I mean, uh, Toby talked about very important stuff as well. Janet was very spot on. And so when I when I coach people, people come to me all the time and say, you know what, I want to transition. I'm worked in this role, the boxing for so long, but I don't want to work in a room. I want to do this. I'm doing what I like, da, 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 and, you know, what, for whatever reason it is. The first thing I start with is where are you right now? And you started by talking about that. Where are you right now? What do you have right now? Biological, biological, for whatever it is in that sense. Where do you want to get to? You know what that is. Uh, that's something I talk about in strategy as well, right? You think about where you are. You do diagnosis where you are. You decide on what you need to do to get from A to B, which is biological sciences to fully a data role, for example, whatever the role is in that sense. And then what is the gap in between? And then how do you fill the gap? An example of what one of the ways is what Jennifer said, for example, I ask people when I do coaching sessions with them, I say, you know, what are your transferable skills? They might not even know, it might take a while to actually get those skills, for example. It might be something you don't think about, but there are real there are skills that you've done or you have, or things you've done and what skills you have that sort of relate to that environment, even if it's not directly relatable in that sense of perspective. That's the first thing. How do you do transferable skills? 
And there's something that needs to put as a caveat. We may not have been talking about it here today, but I want to say clearly that Rome was not built in a day. I know it might sound annoying, unfortunately, to hear it, but it takes a while to sort of get to do such things, for example. That's why sometimes to get some of those rules, some of us may ask sort of how to start very low. And that's why I suggest a lot of times people should think about volunteering, for example, doing projects or being in communities that I can do projects, for example. Um, if Eddie, for example, was doing a side book project, for example, volunteering to support him or TK or uh, Atobi or Janet, so support them, for example, on the side or learning from them and having things you can put on a portfolio works. Now, when I'm interviewing you are hiring for your role, and if I see your Steven, I see biologic biology or anything inside and all, and I'm hiring for data and so to be honest, I would not even look at your profile because I would look at, I have a list of profiles and I will see other people who are actually better than you. Now I look at your profile, if there's something that attracts me in how you communicated your value, for example. So what am I saying? Don't lie on your profile, build your profile in the direction where you want to go to that gap and then start to craft your profile to reflect those things a lot. Oh, I did this project in this, that project in that and all that. Emphasize on those things, for example. And then by the way, oh, my background is biology, whatever, but this is what I have done so far. What people want is the value. If you can, if you, if if I tell you, good, let me give an example. If I tell you guys, um, 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 you enter, you enter a flight, and I'm like, oh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kyle Claude, and I'm your, I'm your pilot today. Um, I have um, PhD, PhD degree in in flying, masters in aeronautical engineering. I have a bachelor, whatever in this uh, flying aviatics, whatever it is, and I'm flying you from um, Lagos to uh, Canada today. Uh, but I've never flown a plane before. What would you do? Everybody will start running from the plane and be like, oh, I'm not going to <laughs> Right? Or, or perhaps I say, oh, hi, everyone. Um, I never went to school one day, uh, but I've flown planes for the last 30 years of my life, or 30 years of my life, every single day. Consider those two circumstances. Right? The worst is said inside the plane. What did you say? <laughs> I thought Someone that I was, sit for, I, was, I, was, I was sit very well inside the plane. Exactly, right? So one of them is about the background, right? I don't know it's so relevant, but the thing is, what have you built? What are you building that sort of communicates that value in that sense? Transferable skills is important. Look for networks like Toby talked about, a network, network and all that to that perspective. Relevant experiences that you have, for example, that helps you. I know someone who was one of, one of my mentors and one of my mentees, actually, who read quantity surveying like me as well back in the days. He did IT with, with me when I, when, with the company where I was back in the days. And then... I was currently in Canada, right? When I was moving to Canada, we were talking about it and all that. And it was like, how will he get a job and all that in that sense? There was there were some jobs that he saw and applied to. We did like sessions on those on those jobs. And then he went for those jobs, like some program management or process manager role in financial space. Financial space. He had some experience, yes, in Nigeria, working in some you know companies on, on program manager and all that, and all that role and all that. But then in the financial space, he did the interview and he aced it. He's worked in that company for like four or five years. He works, he worked in Capital One. He just left and got another job again recently as a manager. So it's about how you think of your transferable skills, communicate your skills, uh, and then agree and know that it is not, it doesn't happen once. It takes a while to build it and start showcasing and building those muscles you want to move on. You want to move it from that level and move in that direction. I read quantity surveying, but I'm doing something different right now. It took me years when I was you know, on an entry level collecting not almost next nothing in my opinion, but then I started growing over a while. But when I built my standard and my quality, people actually reach out to me for jobs and I'm like, I don't want what I want right now because you built it. That's what happens. In the beginning, it'd be stressful, but at some point when it gets to, like Eddie, Jeanette and Toby on the call, they will be calling them for opportunities and they'll be saying yes or no in that sense. Let me stop there. Thank you so very much. Oh, Everyone, sorry, we plan one hour. Go ahead. Sorry, Go ahead. Ajide. Please let me comment. Uh, for Victor, in currently where you are working, do they have like uh, a team, like data analysis team? You might want to go and speak with them first, maybe like overshadow them when they are working. And if there's a space, they might contact you. You might want to start from there as well. There's no, there's no, our, like, there might be opportunity even within your organization as well. Thank you. Victor, I hope you got that. That means where you are is the department. Yes, the yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, we are, I'm working in a hospital in NHS as a therapy assistant, but you, you know how the the what they call the rota is programmed. For me to volunteer, I'm only just going there to maybe to seek like 
net networking. It won't be possible for me to shadow at the moment because I'm I have family. I still have to like regulate my working with that of my spouse, you know. So, so but you need to put in the time, Victor. If yeah, you have yeah, that's a developer okay. that you work with in the organization, you can like tell them like, oh, this is what I'm looking at. This is how it can help me in my job. Can I like yeah. overshadow them, even if it's just three hours every once week? A week. Oh, once right, a week. Thank you. And you'll be so, so shocked that when there's an opportunity in that team, they will contact you first before they post that job. All right. Thank you. I will, I will put, put it in a try. Thanks. I appreciate it. Good. Good. Everyone, I hope this has been of great value to you. Of course, we planned one hour, 30 minutes. But look at this, my people. Look at Coyote. Look at Janet. Look at Toby. Look at Hedy. They have I've squeezed them. <laughs> Thank you. So can we celebrate them, please? We can't thank give them money so because much. they should be given. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. We appreciate so your thank effort you, and Janet. time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so thank you. much. Eddie, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You so, much. Thank so thank you, you everyone. I will stop recording. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, you so much. So I'll stop recording now. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, God, did you want to say anything before I stop recording? Maybe any last... No, no, uh, no, nothing at all. Just a, a big summary about everything we've said so far. Everybody on this call started from... A, go and check everybody's profile. Started from somewhere. Um, and then there are places where you literally almost can't forget where you started from, for example. There's always a starting point. There are sacrifices to be made. Uh, so when you think about where you are right now, where you want to be in the future, and it's important to actually communicate value. When you think about and prioritize value, you would always, always, always find 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 favor, right? Uh, the good book Bible talks about your gift making ways for you, making the way for you, your talent making ways for you. So how do you leverage that to always keep doing those things? How do you manage the connections you have and networks you have here? And I believe that with that hard work, with all of those advices, mentorship, and everything you work and keep working at it, somehow some good fortune will smile on you someday or you'll be blessed you know favored by god and then you land opportunities that helps you and always remember to also give back because that also helps no matter where you are right now the people who you can actually give to no matter how small whatever it is their, their field is giving back to them is like sowing a seed that opens the door for you also for your own next phase as well so yeah good to be here thank you for the opportunity and i wish you all the best thank you so much Ayobami, i see you thank you everyone Thank you, uh, Toby. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, uh, Janet. Thank you, Kyle. I'll stop recording now. I'll make it available as soon as possible. Uh, so the, I've shared their LinkedIn 